good evening everyone and welcome to tuesday class advanced buddhism sutta studies before we start our class let us pay our homage to the buddha by reciting namo tassa three times namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa sadhu 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 thank you for joining today's class and uh, as usual we will be discussing a sutta from the sutta pitaka in today's class and the text of the sutta uh, which we are going to discuss today i have shared uh, in this chat box so if anybody uh, would like to have a copy in your computer or in your device you can download it uh, from uh, the chat box chat area i have shared the file pdf file of the uh, today's sutta today's sutta is uh, lona kapala sutta or lona pala sutta it is also called from the number discourse or anguttara nikaya uh, book of 3 tika nipata so that is the uh, sutta which is going to be the topic for today's class and also i understand today we will have less people as there is another event happening maybe some of our um, regular attendees are attending that i've already got a few apologies from some people saying that they need to uh, join that event also but anyway uh, i will i will be recording these uh, classes so and in the future i hope to put this um, Uh, on our london buddhist vihara uh, youtube channel so it will be available for everyone uh, at any time if you wish us to uh, if you wish to uh, watch them later or just in case if anyone any, anyone uh, misses these classes uh, they'll be able to uh, watch them later when they are uh, up on the uh, youtube channel so let us start today's class uh, as i said today we will be discussing reading uh, this sutta which is called the uh, lonaka palla sutta or it is also called lona pala sutta and this is from anguttara nikaya the number discourse and book of 3 tika nipata the translation which we are going to read in our class is done by bikku sujato and it is available uh, in the sutta central website uh, this is um, this sutta the theme the topic of this sutta is uh, karma again uh, i hope you can remember we uh, already have done discussed and read uh, tulla kamma vibanga sutta one of the main discourses of the buddha uh, on the theme of karma or kamma as we call in pali and this is also related uh, with the same teaching which is kamma again and uh, among many other discourses that uh, is also on the topic of kamma this is uh, another important sutta actually we can uh, discuss further and further more and more things about this topic kamma as it is uh, one of the vast areas of uh, buddhist teaching and also a huge subject that uh, we won't be able to discuss it and complete within one or two days so it's a huge area and it's a vast uh, topic so and also similarly we have number of discourses uh, delivered by the buddha on the topic of this uh, karma so this is another uh, teaching another sutta on the same topic and 
this is actually was suggested by uh, dr mala virasinha and apparently some other people who are uh, joining this class uh, have shown their interest uh, so i selected this sutta for our today's discussion let's uh, first of all see the uh, text and then uh, we can continue our discussion this is recorded in the anguttarunukaya numbered discourses uh in the book of 3 under the section called tikanipatha uh, lonaka palla sutta is the name given to the sutta and also it is called lona palla sutta uh, translation is a lump of salt in pali lona means uh, salt which is uh, quite similar to the singhala word which is lunu uh, i think it is derived from pali word lona so its uh, english translation is salt so lona kapalla means a uh, pinch of salt or a lump of salt and the reason why this name is given to this uh, sutta uh, we will find out uh, as we are reading and discussing the sutta uh, in this sutta buddha has used uh, three uh, similes to show how karma works and how karma functions and what is a nature one nature of uh, the karma and how how actually karma is uh, also impermanent karma is not something permanent but it is also uh, subject to impermanence so to show this buddha has used uh, three similes in this sutta the main simile is uh, a simile of a lump of salt that is how this sutta uh, got its name or this title as the lonaka palla or a lump of salt uh, this is how sutta the text starts mendicants suppose you say no matter how this person performs a deed they experience it the same way this being so the spiritual life could not be lived and there would be no chance of making a complete end of suffering suppose you say no matter how this person performs a deed they experience the result as it should be experienced this being so the spiritual life can be lived and there is a chance of making a complete end of suffering so this is how sutta starts uh, as buddha is addressing a group of bhikkhus he uh, starts the sermon the discourse addressing uh, mendicants that is the uh, translation or the word uh, used by bhikkhu sujato in his translations uh, the pali term is bhikkhus or bhikkhu so buddha addresses uh, a group of monks uh, saying bhikkhus suppose you say these two statements you uh, make these two states uh, statements if one says no matter how this person performs a deed they experience it the same way and buddha says this being so the spiritual life could not be lived and there would be no chance of making a complete end of suffering so if one says or if one is in the view that the karmas or the deeds performed by someone Uh, will be experienced in the same way by the same person so if one says this or if one has this view uh, buddha says uh, there is no uh, chance of uh, ending the suffering and there is no point of uh, living the holy life or spiritual life if it is true so which shows that the the, the first statement is not a uh, true it is not right it is not uh, a true one and the second statement goes if one says no matter how uh, uh, a person performs a deed they experience the results as it should be experienced not in the same way but as it should be experienced in an uh, appropriate way in a suitable way so this being so uh, the spiritual life can be lived and also there is a chance of making a complete end of suffering too so the second the latter statement is the right one which is if one believes or is in the view or if one says that 
the deeds, the karmas performed by someone, uh, the, uh, ex the, the results of those karmas will be experienced by the same person in the, in the appropriate way, in the way it should be experienced, not in the same way, but in, it, it could be various ways. It could be different ways, but in the way it should be experienced in the suitable way. So this being so, if one believes, so if one is in the view, if one is in this view, Buddha says, then it is right and there's point of uh, living the spiritual life, the holy life, uh, it could be monks or nuns' life or any holy life. And also, there's a chance of uh, making complete end of suffering. There's a chance of ending the suffering too, which means this second statement is the right one. The second view is the right view that uh, the karmas or the deeds performed by somebody, uh, the, acts, uh, the, the results or the consequences of those uh, karmas or deeds uh, will be experienced in the uh, proper way, in the way it should be experienced, not in the same way, uh, but in the way it should be experienced. So this is the, uh, the second statement is the right one. If, if this being so, the spiritual life can be lived and also there's a chance of making complete end of suffering too. Take the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed, but it lands them in hell. Meanwhile, another person does the same trivial bad deed, but experiences it in the present life without even a bit left over, not to speak of a, uh, a lot. So going further, going ahead, Buddha says, um, imagine or take the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed, a simple bad karma. And, but that very karma, that very deed, can lead that person, the performer, the doer, uh, into the into hell or into the uh, niraya, into the unhappy uh, destination, unhappy realm, in his or her, in in that person's rebirth. And meanwhile, another person does same kind of trivial bad deed, simple bad deed, would experience its result in this very life, in this present life, and that is it. He finishes it, he, he completes it, and there's nothing remaining. There's no uh, leftover, uh, nothing remaining. So not to speak of a lot. So there's no even a bit left over from that karma uh, that person uh, performs. And in this case, in the second case, that person uh, will experience its consequence or its result in this very life, in this present life, and he uh, uh, finishes or he complete that karma. That karma is no more. It is uh, all, it, it's all gone. He uh, 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 committed the karma, the deed, uh, in this case, a trivial bad deed, and also he experienced its uh, bad consequences in this very life. So that is it. Uh, but in the first case, in the case of the first person, who did also a similar kind of trivial bad deed uh, could lead that person to a unhappy destination, to unhappy uh, rebirth, even in the Niraya, in an uh, unhappy destination. So this is the uh, two different experiences, two different results brought by a same kind of or similar kind of trivial bad deed for two uh, different persons. So this is what Buddha is going to explain. Buddha is going to describe and teach in this sermon by using these uh, uh, similes. What kind of person does a trivial bad deed, but it lands them in hell? A person who hasn't developed their physical endurance, ethics, mind, or wisdom. They are small-minded and mean-spirited, living in suffering. That kind of person does a trivial bad deed, but it lands them in hell. So um, Buddha goes on to describe what kind of, uh, or what are these two kinds of uh, persons, people, one who does the trivial bad deed and also as a result of it, who um, 
is ended up in the uh, unhappy destination, unhappy realm in his rebirth. And also the kind of person who performs or who uh, does the um, similar kind of trivial bad deed, but who experiences its uh, consequences in this very life and finish off, pay off the uh, karma and karma comes to an end. So the first kind of person who does a real bad deed and uh, ended up in the unhappy realm, Buddha says, that person is someone who hasn't developed uh, their phys physical endurance, ethics, mind, or wisdom. And also they are small-minded and mean-spirited, also living in suffering. So that kind of person uh, would be ended up, uh, or as a result of that trivial bad deed, would go to uh, unhappy destination. So that is the first kind of uh, person who would end up uh, in bad destination as a result of uh, his trivial bad karma, trivial bad deed. What kind of person does the same trivial bad deed but experiences it in the present life without even a bit left over, nor to speak of a, let, uh, of a lot? A, per <clears throat> Excuse me. a person who has developed their physical endurance, ethics, <clears throat> mind, and wisdom. They are not small-minded, but are large, uh, but are big-hearted, living without limits. That kind of person does the same trivial bad deed, but experiences it in the present life without even a bit left over, not to speak of a lot. So, this is the second kind of person who does the same kind of uh, trivial bad deed, but importantly, that person experiences its consequences in this very life and finishes it. And that person, the, uh, the, the qualities, so the nature of that person is that he has developed his physical endurance, ethics, mind, and wisdom, and also uh, that kind of person is not small-minded, but big-hearted, living without limits. So that kind of person does the same trivial bad deed, but as a result of it, does not go or will not be born in an unhappy realm, unhappy destination, even in hell, Niraya. But he just finishes it in this very uh, life, in this present life. So th that is the difference between these two uh, kinds of persons and these two kinds of or oh, this same uh, uh, trivial bad deed bringing two results to the to to these two kinds of uh, persons so this is what buddha is explaining more in the uh, sutta so here we should understand a few uh, terms used by the Buddha in the discourse. So before we move on to the next part of the sutta, let's uh, discuss a bit more about these few terms which are being used to um, show the kind of two people here. The first kind of person, as Buddha explains here, is a person who hasn't developed their physical endurance. So this is, Bhikkhu uh, Sujato uh, has translated this as physical endurance. This is um, a development of uh, Kaya Nupassana or the development or the contemplation of the body, the contemplation on the body. And ethics is virtue, seal. Mind is uh, concentration and wisdom is of course, the inside knowledge. So the first kind of person who uh, would be ended up in the unhappy destination in his uh, rebirth as a result of his trivial bad deed is a person who hasn't developed his contemplation on body or his uh, virtue, seal, or his concentration, or also insight, knowledge, wisdom, and also that person is small-minded, which means he has uh, less good qualities. He has no good qualities 
higher qualities and also mean spirited that also means the same thing his qualities are less the good qualities are less and also as a result of his bad maybe karma and also bad life he may be living in suffering uh, subject to many difficulties and sufferings so that kind of person when he does a trivial bad deed that trivial bad deed or its result can take him to an unhappy uh, destination or to uh, a rebirth in an unhappy destination even in hell in niraya so that is the kind of first person and the second kind of uh, person uh, is quite opposite to the first one he has developed his physical endurance his contemplation of the body and also ethics morality or virtues and his mind his uh, concentration and wisdom the insight knowledge insight understanding and also uh, that person is not small minded not a person who has or who um, lacks good qualities but instead he has good qualities and also big hearted which means his uh, good qualities are many he has many more good qualities such as kindness compassion which means he has a big heart and as a result he is living without limits not in suffering but he uh, lives without limits which means again he uh, has given up or he has abandoned some of these uh, so called uh, defilements or cankers that means his life is without those limits the limits of cankers or defilements some of them at least so as a result he is living a limitless life so that kind of person even though he does the same kind of trivial bad deed as the first person that bad deed is not strong enough or not worse enough to take that person to a, uh, to an unhappy destination in that person's rebirth but uh, or instead that person will experience or will pay it off will uh, finish that uh, consequences of this bad trivial trivial bad deed in this very life and he will uh, be free from that trivial bad deed so those are the differences so that is the main difference between these two type of people describing further Uh, the same matter the same teaching uh, buddha now uses these interesting similes suppose a person was to uh, was to drop a lump of salt into a small bowl of water what do you think mendicants buddha asks a question from uh, the group of bhikkhus uh, saying suppose a person was to drop a lump of salt into a small bowl of water so what do you think would that small bowl of water become salty and undrinkable the answer is yes sir why is that because there is only little only a little water in the bowl so this is the question so buddha asked what do you think if a person drops a lump of salt into a small bowl of water what would uh, happen to this bowl of water or what would happen to the water would it be uh, salty and also undrinkable not fit to drink so the bhikkhus say yes sir why because uh, there's only a little water in that bowl so that little uh, lump of salt will be strong enough will be good enough will be sufficient to turn that water into salty water so that water becomes undrinkable or not fit to drink because of the amount of the water and also the amount of the salt and then the next part of the question buddha asks suppose a person was to drop a lump of salt into the ganges river what do you think mendicants would the ganges river become salty and undrinkable the second part of the question buddha asks okay what if a person was to drop same amount of salt into 
the river ganges now you i hope you all know uh, uh, what river ganges is it is the uh, one of the longest uh, rivers in india uh, if you can uh, think of uh, river thames maybe sometimes ganges longer than longer than river thames so but it is a mighty river so buddha asks what if a person uh, drops a same lump of salt into river ganges what would happen to the water uh, in the river ganges would it become uh, salty and undrinkable so the answer is no sir why is that because the ganges river is a vast mass of water so the amount of uh, water and the amount of salt used in this uh, second scenario are hugely uh, different the amount the salt is just a lump of salt whereas the water is a mass collection of water in the river long mighty river ganges so that amount of salt is no is no way uh, strong enough or um, good enough or sufficient to uh, turn the mighty water in the river ganges so that is the comparison this is how it is in the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed but it lands them in hell meanwhile another person does the same trivial bad deed but experiences it in the present life without even a bit left over not to speak of a of a lot so now buddha comes to the uh, real scenario the real situation comparing the um, uh, simile of the uh, lump of salt and the water uh, and shows that this is how it is uh, the first person who hasn't developed his uh, uh, contemplation of body and virtues morality and so and so forth so it is just like the first scenario of the water and the bowl of uh, of of the uh, lump of salt and the bowl a uh, small bowl of water so that person is like the small bowl of water and his trivial bad deed is like the lump of salt so that lump of salt was good enough or strong enough or was sufficient enough to um, turn the small a uh, little water into salty water and so that it became undrinkable and given the situation the, the given the nature of that person that is undeveloped contemplation undeveloped virtues undeveloped uh, morality undeveloped uh, qualities therefore that small or that trivial bad deed was good enough or sufficient enough or worse enough to take that person into a uh, unhappy destination in his rebirth so that is how he experiences uh, that is how he experiences uh, this unhappy or unhappy rebirth meanwhile another person does the same trivial bad deed but experiences it in the present life that person is like the uh, uh, waters in the river ganges and also his same trivial bad deed is like the lump of salt so his lump of salt or his trivial bad deed is not strong enough or it is not worse enough or it is not sufficient to take that person into the uh, bad realm or bad destination as his other qualities such as his uh, development of contemplation his development of virtues his development of um, good qualities as a result of uh, as a result of those good qualities uh, his trivial bad deed is not strong enough to take that person into a unhappy destination but or instead that person will just experience it in this very life and finish it finishes it off okay so this is how this sutta begins and i hope now you can uh, have an understanding of uh, what is taught in this sutta by using uh, these similes we have just uh, 
went through the first simile and there are two more similes coming in the uh, in the later in the sutta uh, which also show uh, how this work or how this uh, karma works and how karma affects in different situations or in different scenarios to uh, different people in different ways so this is how we should understand the nature of the karma not in the first way if you can again think of the first very first statement with which this sutta uh, started that is to say that if somebody performs or does a deed or karma that person will also experience in the same way that is not the right uh, way to say or that is not the right view to have but you should understand that if somebody does a karma uh, the person the doer will understand or will experience its results Uh, in the way it should be experienced not in the same way but in the way it should because karma can bring its result to different people in different ways uh, depending on uh, their nature or depending on their we we may call other karmas so depending on their other qualities so this is how the karma works so karma again uh, is not something permanent it is also subject to impermanence and also uh, the other message is that i i hope even from this first part of the sutta uh, we can understand that if we sort of uh, balance good and bad deeds or good and bad karmas so these can uh, affect the good karmas can affect bad karmas so bad karmas can affect good karmas so it works in both ways so this is how uh, buddha shows and teaches how this karma is uh, another phenomenon which is also subject to impermanence all right so before we uh, go to the next half of the sutta you can speak and um, give your uh comment so if you uh, have any question this far may i ask a question yes fanso yes i don't understand why the person i understand that the person who's got a big heart but seems to get away with it whereas the person who is small minded gets a very bad um goes to hell um and i'm not quite sure i quite understand i i mean you're saying that karma isn't um uh, permanent but karma is collective because the person who has been small minded is obviously got a lot of karma which is bad to make them um go to hell whereas the person who is um big hearted has not got as much karma but how then do you reduce your karma well uh, the person who is uh, uh, who is uh, said to have a uh, uh, big uh, small heart and big heart is again as i said uh, they uh, these terms refer to his qualities actually so the the small heart means that person has more if i if i may i can say more bad qualities and less good qualities and the person who is referred to uh, who is said to have a big heart has good developed good qualities uh, less bad qualities so uh, those two terms are used to show uh, how um, uh, the the qualities of a person the good and bad qualities so another thing is that uh, if somebody has more in his karmic account more bad karmas so as a result naturally that person is sort of uh, uh, moving towards uh, more uh, or moving towards uh, worse rather than better doesn't it also But, depend on how you react to what you do if you do something wrong and are and is sorry 
and make up for it. Doesn't that also come into the quest into the consideration? Sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry. Does it also depend on how you react to what you do? If you do something wrong and you're sorry and you make up for it, doesn't that also affect? Become... It does affect, yes, it does affect. So now even if you do a bad karma, if you repent of it or if you sort of regret over it, 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 it sort of adds more. That is co correct because Buddha said, uh, do not repent of your past regardless of it uh, being good or bad, be it uh, be in the present moment and in the present moment, try to sort of make it uh, a better one. Yeah, so if you sort of repent or, or regret over your past actions or over your past, it adds some more um, uh, karma to it, uh, to it. Thank you. Yeah, Francois, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Bante, may I say something, please? But on that question, may I say something? Okay, okay, Dil, you can say your uh, comment. No. And then... Yeah, on, on that Francois question, there's a word here, Bante, which explains, because it's not that because you're good-hearted that you will not suffer. It says very clearly, but experiences it in the present life. So if you do the same bad thing, you will experience that in this life. But yeah, after yeah. that, because... After that, because your mind is now developed with wisdom, not to be in greed and hatred and delusion, not to be like the gentleman said, not to be in doubt and not to judge and not to complain. Instead, to forgive, to be patient, to have loving kindness and to have compassion. So you have developed and when you say you're big hearted and you're small heart, you have developed your mind now to have those qualities. So you you will anyway experience it, they say you will experience it uh, in the present life. But after that, from that time, because you have the wisdom, you have let the Dhamma and have reflected and done all these things and develop things like forgiveness, compassion, no regret and you know, no resentment and complaining and all these kinds of things. You are now in non-greed or you're developing towards non-greed and non-hatred and towards wisdom. So as a result, from that point onwards, your things that you are doing is you're amassing good things. So when you die, you are not going to be born in hell. Well, you have suffered that whatever consequence, but somebody else would keep on thinking, oh, this person did this thing wrong for me and developed hatred and developed or something else. If you are stolen, develop more greed. So then you will accumulate, keep on. So when you die, you go, other person won't get. So that's where I understand it. Forgive me. Okay, thank you. I think I understand. Mm, thank you. Okay, thank you, Francois. Yeah. Bante, can I add, the, add to what yes, the, please. Yes. you said? There is, a, there is another sutta that really complements this sutta. It's called the um, Brahma Vihara Sutta in which the Buddha says a person who develops the Brahma Viharas of, uh, and gets uh, like Cheto Vimukti, the uh, immeasurable release of the mind through developing loving kindness, compassion, the uh, altruistic joy and equanimity, their mind is like the Ganges, full of compassion, full of this thing and released and that mind, even if uh, that person has done a, a certain bad deed in the past, that bad deed doesn't have the uh, opportunity to give uh, bad results in a person with a mind like that. Whereas in a person whose mind is full of unwholesome uh, states, even a small unwholesome deed will give a, give a result. So I think I'll put the bad sutta in the chat box because I think that really complements this sutta. It's... Yes, yeah, please uh, put it in the chat box so that people can refer to that as well. So I think there's, uh, I, th I think this uh, last term, if I uh, uh, repeat it, this uh, one who, the, the second kind of person who does not, or who uh, just experiences his trivial bad deed and finish it off in this present life, in this very life is 
said to be uh, living in immeasurables. So uh, I think that last term refers to this uh, to these four immeasurables, what we call these Brahma Viharas. Living without limits, it is said, living without limits. So that means uh, developing those four qualities. That's right, immeasurable, boundless. Uh, yeah. Mindless. Yeah, immeasurable, limitless mind of uh, uh, loving kindness, compassion, uh, altruistic joy, and equanimity. Okay, so that, that uh, yes, yeah. so if you want to download the sutta, my text, which I have shared, you can, I think you can just uh, click on it, or, or I think there's, uh, uh, there are three uh, dots next to it, so if you click on it, uh, there comes a menu uh, with two options, open file and find it, find in folder, or maybe open file or download something for you. For me, it's different because I shared it. So in that way, you can uh, you'll be able to download it. And also, I think Dr. Sumana has just uh, shared the name of the sutta that is Brahma Vihara Sutta. That that also goes together with the same theme that we are talking or discussing in this sutta. Okay, so uh, Padma. Uh, do you want to say something? Because uh, I see you have raised your hand. Or is it just accidental? Okay. We will come to the questions and discussions after this part. Uh, let's go to the next part in the text. Now this time Buddha uses uh, in the in the in the next uh, uh, part of the sutta in the next half of the sutta Buddha uses these other two similes to show it or to make the point clearer the same point using these uh, other two similes the same teaching that he is uh, emphasizing on. Let's go to the text again. This is how it is in the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed but it lands them in hell. Meanwhile, another person does the same trivial bad deed, but experiences it in the present life without even bit left over, not to speak of a, of a lot. Take the case of a person who is thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars, while another person isn't thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars. This is the second simile Buddha uses. What kind of person is thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars? A person who is poor, with few possessions and little wealth. That kind of person is thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars. And uh, what kind of person isn't thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars? A person who is rich, affluent, and wealthy. That kind of person isn't thrown in jail for stealing half a dollar, a dollar, or a hundred dollars. So this is the second simile Buddha uses for the purpose of, uh, for the same purpose. This time he uses a simile of a, uh, of uh, two types of uh, persons again uh, in uh, uh, of a scenario of uh, stealing maybe some money. Now here, Bhikkhu uh, Sujato has uh, translated using modern term of dollar. Now in the original sutta, it says uh, that, that, that must have been the uh, unit of uh, money or currency at the Buddha's time to give it a modern understanding. Uh, Bhikkhu Sujato has used dollars, or if you would like or prefer, uh, you may uh, 
think of uh, a pound or half a pound or 100 pounds or whatever uh, the way you uh, understand it. So uh, the story or the simile says that um, in, the, in the first scenario, a person who is uh, found to be guilty of um, stealing a little money or more money uh, would be thrown in jail. And that person uh, is a person who is poor with few possessions and little wealth. That means he is weak in many areas. He is weak in, in terms of uh, his uh, wealth, his possessions, and also must be a person who is uh, weak in the society, uh, a poor person. So that person <clears throat> is easily caught uh, in the law and also uh, will be thrown in jail for stealing this uh, money or it, it, it could be uh, little or uh, big money. And in the second scenario, a person who does the same uh, wrongdoing, again, stealing uh, a, a little money or more money, uh, is not thrown in the jail. And that person is rich affluent and also wealthy. So that person is not easy to uh, be caught and thrown in the jail for doing the same wrongdoing as of the um, first person. So this is the difference. And this, 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 is, this is just only a, uh, only, an, only a simile, a scenario. And well, we don't know whether in reality also this happens today. This, this might have happened at the Buddha's time, must be happening even today uh, uh, in societies. But this is how uh, it affects the wrongdoing. The same wrongdoing affects in two different ways to do two, two different uh, people, two different person. One person is weak, is poor, he has uh, no wealth, he has no power whatsoever, he has no possessions. So he's a weak person in those uh, senses. So that person is easily caught and thrown in the jail uh, for this wrongdoing. And when the same wrongdoing is done, committed by a person who is powerful in many areas, affluent, wealthy, has more powers, maybe has uh, uh, many other uh, uh, advantages uh, and that person is not um, found guilty or thrown in jail for the same wrongdoing. So that's the difference. So that is how the same wrongdoing affects differently uh, based or depending on uh, the situation or the nature or the, the, the powers and the wealth of the person who does the same wrongdoing. So Buddha says, uh, having shown or having uh, related or used this simile, uh, Buddha says again, this is how it is in the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed, but they go to hell. Meanwhile, another person does the same trivial bad deed, but experiences it in the present life without even a bit left over, not to speak of a lot. So this is how it affects. Now, uh, this, this scenario, this simile might not, you know, uh, it doesn't seem uh, right uh, in the context of maybe law or in the uh, law and order or whatever. But in reality, this is how it affects. So Buddha says, similarly, the karma also works in different ways for different people, depending on their other things, such as, the natures and qualities and uh, developments, so and so forth. So in the first um, scenario, the same uh, bad deed affected weak person uh, in a worse way, whereas the same bad deed affected uh, uh, in a very simple way for the second person, depending on his situation or uh, his powers and other qualities. So karma also works in the same way. The same thing is said again or emphasized by using this second kind of uh, simile.
this is how it is in the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed but they go to hell meanwhile another person does the same trivial bad deed but experiences it in the present life without even bit left over and then buddha uses the third simile to show the point more clearly to make it clear uh, for the uh, audience or for the for the bikus it's like a sheep dealer or butcher they can execute jail fine or otherwise punish one person who steals from them but not another now this time he uses a simile or a scenario of a, a sheep dealer or a farmer or a butcher who can execute jail fine or otherwise punish a person who steals a sheep or something from them but not another not all of them but some so what kind of person they can punish a person who is poor with few possessions and little wealth that is the kind of person they can punish so a sheep dealer or a butcher can punish or jail or fine or catch and hand over the person to authorities uh, for stealing and what kind of person can be um, um, fined and punished a person who is again poor uh, with less powers and with few possessions and little wealth a person who is weak in many areas so that kind of a person can be easily caught and punished and fined and found guilty for uh, stealing from a sheep dealer or a butcher and but there is another kind of person who uh, cannot be caught and fined and punished in that same way for the same uh, bad deed what kind of a person can't they punish a person who is rich affluent and wealthy that's the kind of person they can't punish in fact all they can do is raise their uh, their joined palms and ask please good sir give me my sheep or pay me for it so you can see very clearly the difference here now the second kind of person who does the same wrong doing or stealing from uh, the sheep dealer or the butcher now in this second scenario what sheep dealer or the butcher can do instead of catching that person punishing or fining or handing that person to authorities they would go to that person and um, plead or beg saying that good sir please give me my sheep back or pay me for it so that is how uh, differently they work for the same uh, kind of uh, for the same wrong doing depending on the situation or the the nature of the person who does the same wrong doing this time the person is powerful wealthy richer has more powers uh, maybe uh, uh, respected or powerful person with many powers so uh, this time uh, uh, instead of uh, punishing uh, people go and uh, uh, begs for uh, sheep back or uh, money for the sheep so this is how differently it works depending on the nature of the person who does the same wrong doing so show in this buddha again says the same thing this is how it is in the case of a person who does a trivial bad deed but it lands them in hell meanwhile another person does the same trivial bad deed but experiences it in the present life without even bit left over so this is how buddha says karma works depending on again uh, the nature or the qualities or other karmas of that person so it it can work uh, it may work in uh, completely opposite ways and finally buddha says mendicants or bhikkhus suppose you say no matter how this person performs a deed they experience in uh, they, they experience it the same way 
This being so, the spiritual life could not be lived and there would be no chance of making a complete end of suffering. Suppose you say, no matter how this per person performs a deed, they experience the result as it should be experienced. This being so, the spiritual life can be lived and there is a chance of making a complete end of suffering. And again, he emphasizes these two statements. One is right and one is wrong. One is right view and one is the wrong view. The wrong view or the wrong statement is that thinking or having the view of that if one uh, experiences the result of a karma in the same way that karma is committed, that is wrong. That is not the way that the karma works. That is not the way that the karma should be understood and realized. Uh, if, if that is so, Buddha says, there's no uh, chance for ending the suffering because if karma is something permanent, something not changing, something not uh, impermanent, there's no point of living the holy life. Even if you live the holy life, you can't change or you can't uh, end your karma. Karma has the prominence. Karma has uh, the dominating power. So karma will ultimately, or fate or karma, or whatever you may call it, will ultimately uh, decide uh, what, 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 what happens in your life. So there's no point of living the holy life and there will be no chance of uh, ending the suffering, if that is so. Therefore, Buddha says, no, that is not right. The right thing or the right view, uh, the right way in which you, su you should understand uh, the nature of the karma is that the karma which is performed or committed by somebody uh, will bring its result in the way it should be, in the way uh, which is appropriate, in the way that uh, is suitable not in the same way, not in, a, not in a way that is unchanged or unchangeable or uh, uh, impermanent, but in an impermanent way, above, but in a <clears throat> suitable way or appropriate way. So this is how you should understand and realize and learn uh, the karma. And if that is so, there's a point of living the spiritual life and also there's a chance of making uh, the end of the suffering or complete in the end of suffer suffering because karma is also subject to impermanence and also it can be changed or it can be um, influenced or you, you have the authority. Therefore, you have the chance to end your suffering uh, by changing the kar kar karma as well. So karma has no dominating power. Karma cannot uh, sort of uh, decide what happens to you, what happens in your life. So you can decide it. So karma is also subject to impermanence. So even though karma can bring its uh, bad consequences, ultimately you have the power of changing it or deciding your way in which you uh, want to go. So this is finally Buddha um, uh, shows uh, the, the nature of the karma by using these three similes, the simile of the lump of salt and also the simile of the um, um, stealing and uh, putting somebody in the jail. And then finally, the third simile, the simile of a, a person um, who is again stealing uh, from somebody and ended up being jail and also ended up being uh, uh, request, requested or uh, begged uh, by the uh, owner. So by using these three similes, Buddha shows uh, these two statements and the different, the difference of uh, the, the, the di difference of uh, these two statements, and also very importantly, the way in which the karma should be realized and understood. And it means uh, that karma is also subject to change or subject to uh, impermanence, and also karma can be changed by other karmas. So in, if it is so, Buddha says, uh, you have a chance or there is a chance of ending the suffering by ending the karma as well. So this is uh, what is taught in the uh, Lonakapalla Sutta or the simile of the lump of salt uh, by the Buddha.
Bhante, uh, can I uh, ask you to elaborate and explain more? Yes. Uh, living without limits. Living without limits. Uh, yes, as we, as we actually uh, mentioned in our first uh, part of the discussion, so this mainly refers to uh, uh, the four um, uh, limitless abodes or these what we call Brahma Viharas or development of these four qualities uh, that is uh, metta or loving kindness, uh, karuna, compassion, uh, mudita, uh, altruistic or uh, sympathetic joy, and uh, upekka, equanimity. So when you uh, develop these qualities in your life, it is called a limitless life. And in other words, you sort of abandon and eradicate some defilements in the same in the, at, the, at the same time yeah. uh, simultaneously as you develop more of those good qualities you give up and eradicate some bad qualities or defilements from your life so that kind of uh, life is called a limitless life in the sense that you have no limits of uh, defilements wrongdoings your li li life is more towards the good or better way so in that sense it is called a limitless life Thank you, Bhante. Bhante, Bhante can, can I, I add something? Yes, Bhante, please. Can I ask yeah. a question, please? Ah. This last simile, Bhante, okay. yeah. that if you are rich and powerful, yeah. you can do everything. That's what happens in developing countries. But if you are poor and uh, not very powerful, even for a small thing, you are punished. So is Buddha saying that way, that karma also does that way, that one Karma also acts one way to rich people and a different way to uh, the poor people, or does he mean something else? Well, it 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 uh, he he definitely means something else. Well, the the simile is very political, as you said. So I didn't want to uh, mention that it happens in uh, uh, third world or the so-called third world or developing countries in the exactly same way. It is mentioned yeah. in this sutta, which uh, yeah. was delivered in maybe. Uh, more than 2,000, uh, 2,600 years ago, but still it happens in some part of the world, or maybe, I, I don't know, it happens in, in, in a different um, uh, extent in all over the world. Uh, but uh, the, the simile is very political, right? Mm -hmm. But Buddha doesn't say uh, karma affects uh, in different ways to different people, but yeah. it is not based on the uh, powers or how powerful or how rich you are it yeah. it based uh, it is based on how powerful you are karmically not 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 uh, not in terms of uh, uh, wealth Physical or your mentor. richness or your yeah. links or how yeah. you are politically powerful not those things are regarded karma does not base on those things but karma base uh, on your other karmas so if you are karmically rich, if you are karmically one? more powerful, yeah. then the the less power uh, the, the less powerful karmas, even it uh, be it bad or good. Now this happens in both ways actually. Now in this sutta, Buddha talks about uh, a person doing a trivial bad deed and having its consequences uh, for uh, one person in one way and the other person in another way. So it works in the other way as well. Suppose that if you do a, a simple good deed mm. for the person who is uh, karmically again powerful, that simple good deed can bring more results. Whereas for the person who has more bad karmas in his karmic account, that simple, same simple uh, good deed cannot give uh, good results. So here Buddha does not say um, for rich and poor karma works differently, but for people who have other good and bad karmas, karma uh, reacts differently. Yeah, okay, no, that's true. That's what, that's the impression it gives. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bhante. Can I okay. say something, Bhante? Yes, please, yeah. Yeah, um, I read in another book about karma. It says, uh, karma always waits for the best moment to ripen. And uh, it says it's like a seed. For a seed to grow, it needs good soil sunlight, water, and everything. 
But if the seed is just left without any nurturing, no sunlight. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Any, yeah. yeah. If there's no sunlight and if you if it's just left on a wind seal, the seed won't grow and it will perish. And uh, just like that, if a is a good man, say he kills a mosquito, and then he gets on with his life, he does a lot of good deeds, and uh, dana, seal, everything, and that seed is not nurtured, that seed will perish and die away. But if it's a bad man who kills a mosquito, the same sin, um, at the same time, the bad man is doing other bad deeds, like uh, killing other animals and stealing. So he's adding like uh, how you add sunlight, how you add water and soil to this karmic seed. And that will ripen together with uh, his other karmic effects. That's what I heard. That's what yeah, I that, read in the book. Yes, that, that's, that's correct as well. So uh, yeah, that is, that, is, uh, that is more explanation uh, for the same teaching which is uh, taught in this Sutta. So, in other words, this sutta tells the same thing. So, depending on your uh, other karmas, those other karmas uh, that you mentioned or that we mentioned uh, are giving or they, they are helping uh, uh, other karmas to come and give their results. So, as you said, if a person has uh, more bad karmas in his in his consciousness or in his karmic account and when that person does a bad karma because of that uh, atmosphere of the bad karmas uh, that bad karma also has a good situation like you said using the uh, simile of the seed it has a good soil and all the requirements are there so it can grow very easily and very clearly and very maybe fast and strong <clears throat> when the when the atmosphere is not suitable, if uh, the person who does the bad deed has a, uh, uh, has more good karmas, that bad karma does not uh, get on with the good karma. So it has no uh, supporting environment atmosphere to uh, grow up and or to bring its results. Yeah, that is that is what uh, that is very much similar to the teaching which is uh, explained or described in this sutta as well. And I think in at this point, it is worth um, talking about these um, times of the karma, which bring uh, their results uh, in different times. Now, I hope you all are familiar with these terms. Uh, there are a type of karmas which are called Dhamma Vedaniya, the karmas or the deeds yeah. which bring their results in this very life good and bad. So those type of karmas are called Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya Karma. Let me try to uh, write down those uh, words for you. So those are called uh, Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya. So those are uh, the kind of karma uh, which bring their results in this uh, very life or present life. So there are a type of karma according to the time uh, they bring their results. The first type is called Ditta Dhamma Vedaniya, the karmas which bring their results. Now this can be both good and bad in this very life. So they don't uh, wait for a long period because given these nature of these karmas, good and bad, they find uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the environment in this very life because they are uh, powerful sometimes. And also uh, talking about, uh, talking according to the Abhidharma, there are other reasons maybe we can discuss further. And the second type of karma are called Upapajya Vedaniya, Upapajya Vedaniya karma. That means the type of karma bring their results in the second life. Not this very life, but immediate next. In the second life. We call it all in the next life. 
so given the nature of those karmas they can't uh, they they need more time they need more time to be, bring their results so they will have to wait uh, till the next life comes so they need more time that is and the third is called uh, aparapariya apara pariya vedaniya karma that means the type of karmas bring their results uh from or or, or in the third in the third life in the third life so they need more time than the second type so they will wait they will have to wait for two more births so they will bring their results in the third time and there is a type of karma ahosi and these are the type of karma uh, bring no result so this good and bad uh, sometimes they uh, cannot bring results at all because of uh, uh, other karmas so as we have have been discussing those other karmas good and bad can affect some uh, minor karmas so good and bad minor karmas might sometimes uh, will not or might not bring their results uh, as a result of other good and bad karmas because of the Uh, influence of other karmas so this is how karma uh, bring their results some karmas can and will and may bring their results in this very life and there are uh, there are a type of karmas which are in this first category uh, in this first category uh, if they don't uh, bring their results in this very life in the present life they might go to the fourth type ahosi because they can't wait more time they can't wait till the second or the third life if they if, if they uh, don't find a situation to bring their results in this very life given the nature of those karmas they can't wait so they will become ahosi no results um, uh, how to say ahosi karmas they uh, void becomes void and upper uh, 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 upapadya vedaniya is the karmas that can bring their results in the second life or that also can go under ahosi if they don't find a suitable situation in the second life and aparapari vedaniya they can wait more time it can be in the third or from third onward in your journey in the sansara whenever they find suitable and appropriate situation or ground uh, as we discuss as it is said in that uh, simile which was said by dr mala uh, when the seed finds uh, this, uh, the the suitable uh, environment that can uh, grow so the third type of karmas are uh, like that so they can activate from the third life onward whenever they find a suitable the scenario or situation environment But and there are a type of karmas they don't bring results at all Uh, some minor good and bad that is due to other karmas the influence uh, of the other karmas and the influence of the other karmas can affect these minor ones and they might not find a situation or chance to bring their results so they become ahosi nullified or void <laughs> void karma yeah. so that is how they uh, work Mante, can Mante? I ask you a question, please? Mante? Yeah, can I also want to ask. Okay, Now, this, uh, this, this four type of uh, uh, results, something happening this life, if not happening this life, next life, next life, or no. Now, does it presuppose that uh, that person will be reborn as a human being? What happens no. if that person no. person uh, uh, is reborn as a cockroach? yeah it could be now that this that that rebirth is also depending uh, it it depends again on uh, your you know a different situation be it karma or other uh, last thought moment or there are other uh, more reasons or, or, or uh, things which can uh, uh, determine or uh, affect your rebirth so 
that doesn't mean that these these three life or more are not necessarily human life they can so be any yeah, it can be any life any life so if you are born born in a god realm you can still have result of your karma yes yes yeah yeah bante can i yes. please now i'm going to can i speak please yes sujata mrs sujata you yeah. can speak now yeah. bante now i was just listening to the last part really mm. now uh, can a man who has done a very very bad thing have a horse karma i mean say killing a human being or something no that 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 is why i said i mentioned some minor karmas can be uh, uh, a horse or can uh, be uh, can uh, cannot bring their results minor karmas because of th- th- when there are minor these minor karmas good and bad both uh, when there are these minor karmas if that person does uh, more weighty or more you know sort of strong oh. good and bad other karmas those stronger ones can sort of uh, uh, take the chance of these minor ones therefore these minor karmas will not find a chance to bring their results or to activate so that is what happens not the way the, specifically these uh, you know these anantariya papa karmas what yes, we call right. these heinous uh, uh, karmas yes. there are yeah. five of them so those will never be uh, a horsey they will that's definitely I, bring their results that's so, what i want to make sure yeah that's like that there are these weighty karmas which mm. which which never go uh, a horsey or which never go uh, void they will definitely uh some day will bring their results but these minor ones due to the um, uh, influence of uh, more stronger ones can uh, go uh, ahosi karmas yes thank you ante yes um uh, this anant i was going to ask you about anantari papa karma now anantari papa karma doesn't uh, even if it doesn't uh, uh broad results in one life it continues to bring results in several lives isn't it is it well uh, the, the the nature of the anantari or, or the what we call this uh, heinous uh, karmas they will either bring their results well for, uh given the nature of those karmas uh, uh, most likely a person would uh, do one of them only because it is uh, given the nature and uh, the weighty uh, situation of those karmas one cannot perform two or three so if one has performed one that he- heinous uh, karma will bring its result in this very life if not from the next life onward so we don't know how long it will take to sort of um, How, how long that person will take to uh, pay off or uh, uh, finish that karma the result of that karma we don't know that that depends again on uh, on the karma so yeah it it can take a long time like mahamudalana I mean, yeah yeah it ca- carries on no yes yes And yeah if you kill your mother or father yeah right thank you bante Okay so Bante has yeah. you said that karma can really be understood well by a buddha alone Yes that is that is correct the uh, karma we say as buddha says uh, or the field of karma and specifically the uh, uh, karma vipak actually what we mean by result here uh, vipak karma and vipak karma has two parts karma is the deed vipaka is its uh, uh, result or its uh, consequence or its uh, you know sort of uh, bringing its result so this uh, karma and vipaka uh, cannot be uh, comprehended completely or well by ordinary people now uh, it is among these uh, achintyas imponderables uh, for the ordinary beings buddha has said in uh, one of the suttas so i think that sutta is uh, again in uh, uh, anguttara nikaya 
so it is one of these imponderables for uh, ordinary people yeah i can give you the uh, sutta this is called uh, achinta sutta in anguttara nikaya section 4 so there are four things uh, which can which cannot be uh, pondered or realized completely well by ordinary people one of them is the karma visaya or the results of the karma so even though we talk more and more and more about this result of a karma we as ordinary beings cannot uh, comprehend completely and fully right. about the nature and how they bring their results and which karma bring which result and things like that we can have a general and some understanding but not to the uh, fullest um, uh, sense thank you vanti okay so as i mentioned about these uh, heinous heinous uh, uh, karmas or these anantariya papa karmas uh, i don't know if you are aware of that there are uh, good uh, uh, karmas also uh, uh, which are uh, very strong and in terms of their weight they are the strongest good karmas like uh, these bad ones like these five bad or five heinous uh, karmas there are good ones too which are stronger than others they are the uh, jhanas attaining the jhanas so if you attain a jhana it is regarded as a weighty good karma not weighty bad karma but weighty good karma so they are most or they are stronger than other karmas Uh, attain in the jhanas so they are called garuka karmas or veti karmas so the bad garuka karmas or bad veti karmas are those five heinous uh, deeds which are uh, killing ma- uh, mother killing father and injuring the buddha and killing or assassinating uh, an arahant and uh, creating schism in the sangha so those are the bad uh, veti karmas whereas the good veti karmas are the attaining of attainment of jhanas so if one attains jhana it's a weighty good karma which uh, can take predominance over other good karmas vante another question may i ask you please yes the time uh, you know uh, i've been asking this question from many people so at sermons this birth the karma goes from birth to birth doesn't it right now i'm not the person who been born again i'm a different person how does it come on to me i'm not my name there so i mean it goes from birth to birth same karma carries so i just don't get the logic of it really yeah that is uh, that is natural and uh, uh, it's fair to that. think in that way because it is very you know sort of uh, very complicated and complex and confusing thing so it sometimes question. it sometimes seems to be contradicting this anatta teaching yes that's it another teaching of the buddha so yeah it it might be very difficult to understand uh, well i don't know if i can explain or give you a satisfying answer to this question but the way i understand is that well even if you are not the same person you are a production or projection of the person that you are now that that doesn't mean that when we have a rebirth that doesn't mean that we are completely completely a different person so, oh. so that we don't have any connection whatsoever at all with this life no we have some connection so we, that 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 connection is uh, created by a consciousness or these what we call karmas now if you can think of uh, now there is this nice simile used in milinda panya the questions of king miranda uh, 
and the uh, venerable nagasena answering his uh, his questions when kim miranda asked the same question he uh, venerable nagasena used this nice simile to uh, give him a satisfying uh, answer so he said venerable nagasena said uh, uh, o lord or king think of a pot of milk now you have a pot of milk in front of you so now you can drink it it is it is liquid it is milk now the same pot of milk if you put under a different process you boil it or you do whatever it requires and then you make sort of a butter from that same pot now can you call that butter uh, milk no yeah. and can you not call uh, or, or uh, uh, can you call that butter completely a different thing that is also no because that butter is made of milk but it is not a milk any long anymore it cannot be uh, uh, drunk so that is how this rebirth uh, link happens so you are neither a completely a different person nor uh, the same person but you are a projection of your what you were in your previous life so that connection is created or linked Uh, uh by your consciousness now in your consciousness you have this account of karma because karma is uh, the, the the definition the interpretation of the buddha is chetana ham bikwe kamam vadami karma is nothing but your consciousness your chetana your intention so whenever you perform or commit a karma that karma or that deed that action is uh, uh driven by your intention when you have an intention that in intention is in your consciousness whether you are aware of it or not that is in your consciousness that consciousness we carry oh. from life to life so as we have uh, discussed when that karmic consciousness that we created finds a suitable environment that will come back that is how karma reacts so karma bring uh, karma brings its results so this 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 is very complicated and complex thing to understand and i say something bante yeah. yeah can it be the karmic energy which goes from life to life because it's not a thought process because i read when somebody goes into nirodha samapatti the thought process stops but it's a karmic energy which sustains life it yeah. continues it sustains life just like that is uh, the karma doesn't go go in the thought process because you get a patisandhi chuti and then the patisandhi which is a new one but there is a karmic energy which goes from life to life can it be that yeah 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 you can yes you can uh, interpret it in that way as well yeah as karmic energy may i say something bante yes francois My my Buddhist teacher used to say, my old Buddhist teacher, that um, people like ourselves, people who are on the spiritual path, when they die, like you said, the consciousness um, is will will look for a suitable um, parentage to put that person in, that that gives that person the chance to. Um, have have it might mean that they have suffering it might have happiness but it gives them that that opportunity for their karma to have the conditions so that their life will bring about the karma that they needed to reenact um so it may be that they have some suffering it may have more happiness but it that there, there there will be a suitable waiting for that person to find the right place in the world the right parents so that their their conscious their karma has the right conditions to help them on their spiritual path does that sound right yeah it does yes yeah in that way also you can um, understand and ex- explain how karma works and reacts Hmm. Thank you.
Bante? Yeah. Um, can I just say one more thing on the topic of rebirth? Um, I actually uh, am not really sure where this simile comes from. I know that I've heard it from uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi and I've tried looking it up just now, but um, I can't find if it's in any of the suttas. But there's also a simile um, that he mentioned, which is uh, the simile of uh, two candles and how if you light one candle uh, with the flame of the other, it's not exactly the same fire, but it is somehow related and comes from the previous candles fire. So um, he mentioned that um, rebirth can be thought of in a similar way where uh, your body is sort of like a candle and your consciousness is the flame that lights the next um, existence or the next uh, rebirth consciousness. And it's not exactly the same flame, but it's not completely a different flame either. I'm not sure where it comes from though, but I yeah, found that helpful in explaining. Yeah, it is helpful, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, yes, you can use that simile also to show this uh, connection or link between one life to, to another. It is a nice simile. Okay, so I think uh, if we don't have uh, more questions, uh, we can end uh, today's discussion now. Uh, so thank you very much again. Thank you very much, Bhante. Thank you for joining this uh, Sutta class and also contributing and asking questions and giving your comments. So let us meet again with another Sutta next week at the same time. So stay safe and I wish you all, may you all be well, happy and peaceful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.